Hello friends, welcome to this session and tutorial series on AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Preparation. I am Praveen, a Google Cloud Authorized Trainer. I will be trainer for you for this entire course. I have certification from multiple hyperscaler and cloud provider like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. You can connect me and follow me on LinkedIn with my first name and last name. If you are new to this tutorial series, then also follow my two other playlists. One is AWS Certified Solution Architect Hands-On and another is AWS Certified Solution Architect Question and Answers. If you are new to my channel, please like it, subscribe it and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I will publish new video. Without wasting any time, let's get started. Welcome back. Today we are going to start new module Amazon EC2. So far we have covered a general topic IAM, Identity and Access Management and Simple Storage Service. And there are few advanced topics still left on a Simple Storage Service that I will cover later as I promise. Today we will start Amazon EC2 module and this is very important for AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. And especially in today's session we are going to look into Amazon EC2 overview. Okay. So we will try to understand what is Amazon EC2, what are different features of Amazon EC2, what are different terms we need to know for Amazon EC2 and also uh, steps to launch a major EC2. So let's get started. So now let's understand what is Amazon EC2. Amazon EC2 is a scalable compute capacity. What is compute capacity? Compute capacity is nothing but virtual machine. Okay, so from Amazon EC2, we can get virtual machines, okay. And these are scalable. Scalable means we can do a vertical scaling as well as horizontal scaling of those servers of those virtual machines. Another benefit of using Amazon EC2 is we not need to do upfront investment in hardware. Friends, this is not a related. Okay, of course this is related to Amazon EC2, but this is part of cloud computing right so before cloud computing came a company who needs virtual machines who needs servers they need to do they need to buy hardware okay so for that they need to do a lot of upfront investment but having cloud computing using cloud computing and especially on amazon ec2 okay we not need to do any upfront investment if you need five servers you can go and get it okay and you only pay what you use okay if you need one server you can go and get it okay so we no need to do any upfront investment and friends doing upfront investment okay before cloud computing it was quite okay it's easier not easier but yeah it's okay for the big enterprise but think about the startup okay and think about the individual developer like you and me okay if we have some idea okay and we want to launch we want to run our application okay then we cannot buy a hardware right we cannot afford it but now it's very easier for the developer and a startup they can go and get virtual machines and as many as virtual machine they want so there is no limitation okay if you want to want you can get one if you need thousand virtual machines we can go and get thousand virtual machine and especially with amazon ec2 we can scale up and scale down those virtual machines based on traffic and the popularity of your applications okay it's mean amazon ec2 has feature called auto scaling that we will look in later session okay so we can configure auto scaling to increase number of instances and decrease number of virtual machines increase number of virtual machines and decrease number of virtual machines 
based on access pattern of your application based on traffic next point as we know at this point of time these virtual machines are on amazon web services data center but still you and we will have complete control on these servers okay so this is very important from security perspective okay so though it will be in amazon data center but still will have the complete control and there is a different way to secure those servers that again we will look in detail in the later sessions lately amazon web services started supporting mac os okay so if you want mac os based virtual machine you can go and get it as well we can get these virtual machines in almost all regions and ability zones that's available inside aws and we know this compute capacity this virtual machines has a memory right cpu processor and the networking right and storage so we have option to choose different processor okay intel amd and arm based processor so we can choose either of them based on our requirement now let's look into some feature and terms that's used for Amazon EC2. Okay, so when we launch any virtual machine in Amazon EC2, so this is known as instances. Instance. Okay, so when we launch any EC2 machine or virtual machine in Amazon EC2, we call it as a instances or instance. Okay. So going forward, okay, in all upcoming sessions, instead of calling it virtual machine, we will call at instances, okay. So this is technical term for virtual machines in Amazon EC2. <clears throat> Another important thing is there is concept of AMI, okay, Amazon machine image. What is it, okay? So when we create virtual machine, okay, so this virtual machine boots boots for booting those virtual machines right we need operating system and then we also need some additional software okay so aws has images for that right let's say our laptop right when we get new laptop we need to boot this laptop right for that we need operating systems right so same things in aws okay that's called as ami amazon machine image and this is this includes operating system and some additional software so to launch instances inside amazon ec2 we need ami okay and we can launch virtual machine okay okay when we launch virtual machine so virtual machine is the compute capacity right and compute capacity is nothing but cpu memory storage and networking okay so amazon web services they have created different combination of this cpu memory storage and networking okay so for for those different combination okay is known as instance type okay so okay let's rephrase it so amazon web services has created different instance different instance types based on cpu memory storage and networking okay so some instance type is optimized for memory some is optimized for the storage okay again we will have separate topic on this instance types okay so that will be going to cover in detail in detail once we launch our uh, instances inside EC2 instance and virtual machine inside EC2 instance, we can securely access it, right? We know this is somewhere in AWS data center. So to access it, we will use key pair, okay? So again, key pair is AWS specific term, okay? And there we will create key pair. When we create key pair, then it's combination of public key 
and private key okay so when we create key pair then we will download private key and AWS key public key and when we launch our EC2 instance then we have to specify that particular key and using our private key we will securely logging to our instances okay virtual machine so if it would be linux we will do ssh if this is window we will use rdp this virtual machines comes with two type of storage okay one is temporary storage and one is persistence storage okay temporary storage means if we stop hibernate or terminate the instance then that storage will be deleted and that storage is called instance storage volumes okay so instance storage volume is temporary volume temporary storage that gets deleted when we stop hibernate or terminate our ec2 instances okay so this is called instance storage imagine ec2 has also persistence storage means this will present regardless of life cycle of your ec2 instance whether you will stop it delete it terminate it those storage will be always in your account and you can use and attach with other ec2 instances and other servers okay so that's called amazon ebs volumes again we will be looking all those in details another important points okay we can launch this instances in different region and different ability zones okay based on your requirement and as we know we are putting this servers we are creating this servers on aws data center right then we can also enable firewall right in our traditional data center we have concept of the firewall so we can also enable firewall for those servers and those are known as security group inside amazon web services okay so we can create security group and those will have and there we can specify port protocol and source ip from where we can access those instances those servers okay and there is also concept of elastic ip address what is mean so elastic ip address means okay so we can get a ip address and that won't change okay and those ip addresses we can attach with our ec2 instance okay so if your ec2 instance get terminated still you will have those elastic ip address that's why it's also called as static ip address okay so again when you will have the new instance you can attach this elastic ip address to your instance because when we terminate a instance so instance private ip will be changed it will be deallocated okay so we should use and we will use elastic ip address and we can create also metadata called tags okay so when we create a virtual machine then we can tags our virtual machines with different uh, names okay so based on the environment based on the cost center based on the owners based on the application name so these tags going to help us identify our servers when we are running thousands of servers in one account okay and we can we can also launch these instances in your private network in amazon web services we can create our private network and this is known as virtual private cloud this is again a different module networking module that will be going to cover later so so far uh, these are the different terms okay different features we need to know and understand regarding amazon ec2 now how do we launch how do we create ec2 instance 
so there is a five simple steps okay first things you have to have aws account and if you are following this tutorial series then you have you has aws accounts right we created aws account <coughs> Once you have AWS account, then you can go to EC2 console and from there we can launch EC2 instance. While launching EC2 instance, we need to provide different configuration, okay, like security group, storage, okay. Once we provide all these details, we can launch our EC2 instance. And then we can connect our EC2 instance, okay, with SSH or using RDP. And after that, if we need, we can terminate it. If it's for testing purpose, we should always delete those instances. Otherwise, it's going to cost us. And we are going to do hands-on lab on this, okay. Since that's all for this session, in next session, we are going to look into Amazon EC2 pricing. So that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. See you in next session. Bye bye.